of the shiplap. Um, so what we did was we got these little boards. Um, there, it's actually plywood size boards, eight by four. And we had the kind people at Lowe's uh, rip them into strips of a little under five inches. So this is what we uh, you know, have to work with. And we're going to put these um, poor man's ship lap, as I like to call it, over most of these walls. So all along here, we're going to use the ship lap and, you know, pretty much all over. Uh, it's hard to describe, but you'll see what we're talking about. But today, this is my, my job. I want to get that wall down and paint it up and uh, finish this kitchen, put it all back together. So that's the hope. Uh, for today, so hopefully the weather will cooperate and I'll be able to cut outside. It'll be so much easier to do that way, but yeah, so here we go. One other thing I wanted to talk about, one of the things that RVs are known for are not having, at least in the old ones, um, not having enough electrical outlets. So as you can see, there's one pretty ugly looking one there, and that's really it. Um, there's one up above for the microwave or the convection oven, but down below there's really nothing in this whole area, so I'm going to extend um, our outlet from here through this wall and then over to here uh, and put another outlet over here. I bought a, a USB enabled outlet so it has two plugs and then two USB plugs as well because this is going to be where Amy and I's bed is going to be so it'll be really nice to be able to charge our phones at night and not need to leave them somewhere else so um, yeah I'm gonna stretch that out and put that right there too so again this is the wall that I'm going to be ship lapping today and again it's not really a true ship lap um, some of you might be watching this in your ship lap purists or Joanna Gaines devotees as you can see this is not ship lap ship lap has a certain edge that they click right into each other or sit right on top this isn't that but we needed to have something that was thin and lightweight for example because we didn't want to tear down this wall and we're trying to keep everything light. And shiplap, as you know, uh, one board that would probably fill up maybe two of these little rows here is gonna cost like $9 at Lowe's. So just to do this wall at Lowe's with shiplap could run like 70 bucks. And uh, we just don't wanna do that. We're doing this on a budget, and I guess most people who are watching this are also doing it on a budget. So we, uh, you know, we're, we're improvising. We've done this in our house. And I'll show you some pictures of what our house looks like on the inside, and we really like the way this has done it, uh, the way that it, the way that it looks. Um, we've done it with regular shiplap, like the real stuff, the expensive stuff, and we've done it this cheap way, and we kind of like both. So for the price, you can't beat it. So just to let you know how we prep this, it's a lot easier to do this with these kind of things out because, uh, first of all, half of this wall you're never even going to see. It's behind. Uh, the kitchen uh, build out, whatever you want to call it, different cabinets. Uh, this is like the guts back here, and it was really, really bad. I cleaned it out as best I could. Um, I'm still going to get a little bit more before I truly wrap this thing back up. But, um, I mean, look at this. I didn't even see it. Cigarette wrappers. I mean, this is a great example. I uh, don't want to give them any endorsement. Don't smoke, kids. But this is just a really gross... Um, Gross RV. It still needs some cleaning. It looks like somebody, oh, this is good. Somebody left a, looks like a measuring tape. Actually, that's not measuring tape. Well, this is the excitement of owning a used RV. You never know what you're gonna find. Uh, dare I say, is this what I think it is? Oh, please be money, please be money. Oh boy. <laughs> well, I just found somebody's stash. That's great. Oh boy. All right. I was hoping for money. I've been joking with Amy ever since we bought this thing that I'm going to open up a wall and find wads of money. Unfortunately, that's not what I found in my stash. So um, I found somebody's stash stashed in my wall. So who knows what else I'm going to find back there. Hopefully nothing more, but I'm going to clean this all out before I prep it, before I finally finish it anyway. But once these planks are up on the wall, I'm going to give it some paint and then close her up with the rest of the kitchen. So, um, yeah, good start to this video. So this is what the shiplap looks like. Forgive the lighting, it's a rainy day and it's very shadowy in here. But this is what it looks like uh, when you do the shiplap, the way that I'm showing you. Um, from afar, 
and even up close, it looks really rough hewn and we like the look of it. Um, but yeah, make sure you sand those edges. So this is our pantry and we did it in here as well on the roof and everything. And we're really happy with, uh, with the results. We like how the shiplap looks. Um, we did it a lot smaller in the, uh, in the RV. These are like seven inches. We went down to like 4.75 inches. So um, you might want to go higher or lower. It's up to you, but this is how we did it and, and what it looks like for us. So if you decide to do this kind of shiplap project, you'll notice after the saw blades rip these at lows, they don't use like really good saw blades. So this is after a round of sanding. Make sure you sand these things because the edges can get a little bit, a uh, little bit hairy, I call them. But you want to sand them down really good to get a good look. So if you, uh, if you don't feel like sanding them, this is a good look of what they might look like after Lowe's gets done with them. Um, definitely sand them or you're probably not going to be happy with how they look when they're hanging out. Definitely, definitely should do that. You're going to get a snack? Okay, bud. So we basically take the underside of this board. The type we bought was at Lowe's. Again, one side is primed, the other side is not. So obviously we want the primed side. And in the past when I've done this, I just give it a nice little dab of liquid nails. And that kind of keeps it to the wall. And give it a good little coat of this. Not too much, doesn't need to be overdone, but just a little bit. And then stick this sucker to the wall. And then you can top it off with a couple of pin nails to uh, hold it up. You don't want to overdo it, but you won't see them too much if you use the pin nails. And now we're going to do this whole wall and it's going to look very different when I'm done. And here's the finished product, or at least the semi-finished product. That's what it looks like with the shiplap up. I had to cut it real close to the ceiling there. But I'm pretty happy with it. I like it. I'm going to give it a coat of paint and it'll look much, much, much better. And you're going to paint some of this while I'm at it. Uh, I just cut out a little hole for the uh, new outlet over here. So getting ready to check my work and see if the uh, receptacle piece will fit in here. So uh, hopefully it does. Yeah. Nice and tight. Solid. Be able to screw it right in there and put the stove and everything back in there without any trouble. I got one of the short ones, um, or it's not very deep, a shallow one, so that it doesn't interfere with anything back there. So I'm going to wire this thing up, connect it down to the wire that's coming out of this receptacle here. So it's pretty simple. Um, it's basically I have to take this wire that's already separated right here and uh, connect this into a junction box that I bought. And you'll see it when it's done. So we got the wall unit electrical piece put in. And now I'm going to uh, shiplap this little area here. And after that, we're gonna give it some paint, see how she looks. Right guys, I got two big helpers today. I got Kate and Chesapeake with me. Right guys? Yeah. Yep, my helpers. What are you working on, buddy? Oh yeah, keeping it square, huh? What about you, Kate? I'm just thinking about this. Yeah. <laughs> here at Lowe's, picking out colors for the kitchen here. I'm not sure what we're gonna do for the cabinets yet. That's gonna be up to Amy. But we are going to go with this color for the walls, for the shiplap throughout. Amy wanted, uh, she chose a color called Alabaster, and it's a shade of white, it's made by Sherwin-Williams. We bought it at Lowe's, and we're currently putting it up on our first wall, and we love it so far. This is actually what we used in our kitchen, and we really like the look, um, also in our dining room and <clears throat> some of the other places in our house. So soon, this is going to be nice and alabaster white. So we've kind of just got it started. I'm cutting it in and I'll show you what she looks like when we're done. 
So after two coats of paint, this is what we got. Big difference. If you're standing in here, it would really be noticeable. Um, not sure how it's going to portray over a YouTube video, but wow, what a difference! Just in that white, and just looks so much better. Um, going to put back the cabinets. We're really going to see some change in here. So now I'm putting up the wainscoting in the uh, slide out area. Uh, I've done the first row and uh, luckily it's all one cut. I don't have to really patch anything together because it's a good size that I can get it off from one piece of wood that I had cut. So it should make it a little bit easier to put up. Uh, the first one's up and once you get the first one in, you just stack and go. So this will look a lot like that wall once it's done and start to tie all this stuff in together. Slowly but surely. Now that the shiplap is kind of pretty much done on this side, I'm, I'm waiting to finish that because we needed to figure out what we're going to do for our lighting fixture. We're going to do shiplap on all these little crevices here and just kind of tie it in all the way around. Uh, I've already started a few down there, but I'm uh, just trying to tie this all in so that it kind of fits and hopefully it'll, hopefully this will all make sense when we're done. It's already looking cleaner in these little spots where we've done it. But once it's painted white, we expect to see a big difference. So I'm working my way right on up this little uh, little spot here between the door and the slide. Get rid of this ugliness that is already there. Finally getting to this wall here. I'm giving it a coat of paint. It's finally coming along. So much better than that, <clears throat> that ugly color before. Slowly making some progress and I uh, hope to be done with this section very soon. Uh, it's taking forever and I'm going to replace that electric up there with uh, a new light. Replace those, paint all this stuff white and uh, it's going to look a lot better. Uh, we've done some shiplap over in this area and the next big part that I'm trying to tackle is our long-term plan is to put a uh, flat screen TV up here. Uh, we don't like the old uh, 1981 CRT monitor that's up there and we're going to mount just a small uh, flat screen LCD TV over here but that's going to require a little bit of wiring changes. So. Um, I've started the preliminary process of this. Um, this was the old, this is the light. I'm still not sure what we're going to do with that yet. If we're going to leave a light in place over here at all or just cap it off and, and, and leave it. But we're going to put a TV over here with a swing arm so that we can uh, you know, move it around so that if the kids are in the back at a table or if we're over in uh, what's going to be our bed or our couch area, uh, we'll be able to watch TV without any, uh, any issues. It'll be a lot better than, than this old guy, which doesn't even work. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get rid of that. Don't know what we're gonna use it for yet. Um, I'll let the wife decide. Amy will have a good idea for how to use that space, but I definitely want a nice TV to be able to watch, so. So as you can see, I cut this hole. Um, there's the wire right back in there. And strangely enough, there was a piece of metal in the wall there. Uh, it's like metal backing, so I had to, to clip that all out. I just used a drill and kind of cut a bunch of little pieces and snapped it off. So uh, it should be fine to, to for what we need, though. And we're going to tie it right down there. And this is where the HDMI cable is going to come out. Daddy? Yes? I made slime. You made slime. Awesome. It's slime. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we're going to do here. So... Hope it works. Uh, I focus now on this, um, the driving area. And I have shiplap this whole area here for now. And I'm planning on giving it a coat of paint uh, to make it look nice. I've kind of sealed that whole area in. That was a little uh, weak spot before where the heat would come out from the engine as I drove. So I'm hoping I fix that up with some spray foam and some insulation. But uh, this is what I'm working on now. I've pulled all this out. I'm going to replace a lot of this stuff, new electric outlet. 
and we're going to paint it. So I'm going to go ahead and be quiet and paint and I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. So we made a little bit of progress over here. I got the shiplap done in the front and it's painted and the AC um, ducts are back on. Got some new electric outlets over here. Now I'm working on this spot here. I'm running some wire through um, to uh, connect our TV. This is where our our uh, flat screen is going to be mounted. So I've taken our TV down from that ugly area up there, which I didn't realize when I pulled the TV out, I'd see all the spray foam. So I'm going to have to box that in is my, uh, is my plan. But I'm going to move the TV over to this spot. So I've kind of cut out some holes for um, my HDMI cable is going to come out here. And my power has already been wired. I've connected uh, the power, run it down through the wall and connected it way back into there. Um, made a little junction box back there and connected it and run it through under here. So I'm going to follow the same path with my with my HDMI cable. So I bought a 15 foot HDMI cable at uh, Home Depot and the plan is I put some tape on the on the tip of it to keep styrofoam and whatever from getting in there as I kind of have to jam it through but um, yeah let me go ahead and put the camera down and I'll go ahead and start threading this thing through and hopefully it won't be too hard to get in there. Uh, I have to admit, it's been a long time since I've updated the video. Um, I've really, it's been a long time since I've been working on my RV. Uh, we're just finally getting past some holidays and time off and stuff that I had to do at work. And uh, I haven't been able to put a lot of time into this thing, at least not like I want to. And I'm kind of falling behind and I haven't really been filming as much as I would like to. But I'm in the middle of... Um, finishing this shiplap up here in the front. It looks absolutely awful up here. I've torn it all apart. I finished this front uh, area down here, down around the dashboard area. Uh, at least not really finished it, but you know, painted it. I've painted some of this side and painted some of that side over there. But today, my hope is to uh, finish shiplapping this little area here. And uh, I'm prepping everything now for paint. I'm gonna try to paint all these cabinets and try to paint these cabinets here as well. Uh, kind of working on that. It's taken a while to get to this, but uh, I think this will be a big change. I've been really focused on details, and because of that, it's taken me forever. So I'm just going to try to knock some of this stuff out, and I think when you see the end product, it's really going to look different when it's, uh, when it's all painted and put back together. I think we'll really see a big difference in here. So still have a ways to go. Um, I'm putting in a TV. This is where our TV is going to be. As you can see, I removed the TV from up there, and now we have a big gaping hole. I need to figure out what to do with that. But we are going to mount a TV right here, and uh, just a flat screen, uh, mount it to the wall. I've already created, I've built a little mount because, um, you know, there's no way that the wall is going to hold the weight of a TV. So I'm going to uh, put this this bad boy in the wall use about six screws so that it holds it up really well because if you can see what these walls are made of I mean this is uh, you know there's not much here it's just a tiny little piece of, of plywood and you know styrofoam behind um, I had to I ran an HDMI cable through the hole that was already there luckily there was a hole but that will give us the power that we need to run the TV there and that'll be that'll make much more sense for us we're planning on getting rid of this table and uh, you'll see how that turns out I don't want to say too much because the plans are subject to change I have been incredibly derelict in my duties and not updating progress so you can see the uh, the kitchen is coming together and I've started to paint this whole area up here I've used shiplap and I've boxed in the uh, the driving area up here and I've shiplap this whole area and painted over here as well so there's a big difference between what it used to look like and uh, probably the last episode that you saw um, just a friendly reminder we have several videos available for you to go back and watch the progress um, you'll see a lot of changes from uh, I know it looks horrible right now. This place is still a construction zone. Uh, but if you saw this place back in the original video, um, then you, you'll notice we've done quite a bit. But it looks a lot cleaner in here since we've gone with the white. So I'm really glad that Amy decided to do that. Uh, but we've touched it up. We've, um, I put a nice little, uh, for lack of a better word, a doohickey in the door here. Um, for whatever reason, 
this piece was not here. Um, I think I told you before, this door is uh, obviously not standard equipment. From what I've been told, the uh, previous owner had a break-in situation at an RV park and uh, he replaced the door. So that's why this door looks horrible. It doesn't quite fit right and it's a different color. And uh, this little switch here, I was able to install. And so whenever the door is closed, the stairs close. Whenever the door is open, the stairs open. So nice little touch for us uh, because I tend to leave the stairs open when I drive away. So this way I won't do that anymore, I hope. And we've got the TV wired. I've just got to do a little bit more work because we just painted, but um, I run some an extra electrical wire uh, through this whole area, connected it in a junction box back there. It's kind of hard to see uh, to existing electricity. And uh, that's going to power our TV, which is going to go right there. So I've taken off some of our light fixtures. We are not going to buy new ones, I don't think. We're going to take these existing ones, uh, tape them off, spray paint them to get rid of this ugly... Uh, color ugly metal finish and uh, go with something like a brush nickel kind of look so we're gonna do it a little cheaply and do it that way uh, because these you can't just buy at a Home Depot if you haven't noticed so we're just gonna renew recycle the ones we have and and uh, go with it that way and the cabinet fronts have all been painted now and uh, I used a satin and we didn't want to go with high gloss because it's too shiny. So we're using satin on the cabinet doors and uh, that should be good. But these are all the cabinets from inside of the living room uh, and back towards the refrigerator area. So once these go on, I'm going to hinge these up and put some new, uh, new hardware on them. Should look a lot better once they get reinstalled. It took, um, I, obviously, I didn't film the details, but I figure most of you know how to paint or have seen people do it before. But to get this look, which I'm really happy with, it's nice and smooth, I used um, three coats of, this is the brand that I used, Sherwin-Williams Showcase. This came from Lowe's. Um, interior Satin. Uh, I will not say that it was one coat coverage guaranteed because... The, uh, it took three coats to get it looking nice and, and smooth like this. But three coats is fine. It really wasn't that hard to do. Um, I used a foam brush for the first to keep it nice and smooth and then just used a good high quality brush for the final coat. But I'm liking it. I'm going to like it even better when they're hung back up. So I've taken down my light fixtures and I'm getting ready to replace them. But because we are doing this on a budget, we're not gonna buy brand new ones because believe it or not, these halogen bulbs, these halogen lights are, they can be pricey because they have to be for an RV. You can't just buy these at your, your Home Depot. Uh, so I am going to buy this at Home Depot and we're gonna give it a pewter look. So I've taken them out and I'm gonna give these guys a little coat of spray paint and uh, we'll see how they look. But I'm hoping that they look like computer that <laughs> it actually works and everything sticks so let's see how it goes here are our test subjects sorry about the generator noise in the background and we're going to shake her up and we're going to give her a little little tap nothing too hard not a whole lot let's see how it looks i'm leaving the uh, screws in there too because i at least want the tops of them to have it but it's the light light covering i don't want a lot see how she holds up but so far it looks kind of cool most of this most of this flat surface is covered space that one in a bad spot so every little piece doesn't necessarily have to get perfect but the edges are the parts that we'll see the most. And again, you don't want to overdo it. Just want to make sure you get every spot though. Make sure you get all sides covered and, and just let it dry for a little while. 
and we're going to do that with all of our lights. So let's see how this turns out and then we'll go from there. So it's about an hour later and uh, I think these are dry enough. And I'm liking the look of these. All of a sudden they look like they're made out of metal, which is pretty cool. So we're going to do that with a bunch more of our light fixtures and maybe even a few other things and see how that turns out. Kind of get that old metal look. So I've spray painted the shells of these light fixtures, the hockey pucks that go underneath um, what's going to be our sofa area. So I'm kind of happy with how they turned out. I used the, um, the antique pewter and it kind of gives it a good rough look. So I'm just going to put this back together now and uh, hopefully all will go together as planned. You'll want to make sure that the screw holes line up with this before you put it on because it's got to be able to go through them. So it's probably best to put them in and make sure they, they stick out the back first. So at this point I'm going to connect uh, the original cables, which I believe are 14 gauge uh, electric cables and uh, I'm going to connect those back to these hockey puck lights. And the best way that i found to do it is using these little uh, butt slicers, splicers, sorry, sounds painful either way, uh, but it's a butt splicer or butt joint, whatever you want to call these things, but uh, you basically take one of these guys and uh, you stick one piece of the cable into here and the other piece of the cable goes into here and then you crimp them together. Sorry if you can't see that, but you just basically um, put them both in together and use a crimping tool to crunch them together and then they formed a bond. So that's what we're going to do here. One word to remember is make sure, uh, because both of these are white, I really don't know electricity too, uh, too well. So you want to make sure that you keep track of which one is which. Um, because they're both white, I left these on when I cut them so I know this one goes to the green. That may not even matter, I don't know, but um, on the bottom of this thing here, the left side says 12 volt and the t this one says 10 watt. I don't know if you can see it or not. So one of these may be 12 volt and one of them may be 10 watt. I don't know. Um, if you're an electrician, please comment below. That'd be great. But um, I don't know the answer to that. So in the meantime, I am just going to keep the old ones on there, which is what I did with all of them. So I can make sure I attach them back to the right spot. So let's give it a shot here. So put the first one in and make sure you get the right size uh, butt splicer. Uh, you want to make sure you have one that fits your wire. This, the white wires that are connected here are pretty small. I don't know the size, but um, the, these ones here are like 14 gauge. So what you want to do is take the top piece of your, of your electrical tool, and that's the crimper, and you just kind of want to find the right color, and you crimp it down so that wire cannot get out. So let's try this out and see how it goes. All right, so it's crimped. It's not coming off. You can shake it, it's not coming off. And then you'll do the same thing to this side. Just jam the wire in there, make sure you don't leave any of it exposed. And you may have to uh, you know, just kind of force it in there. And, and then once it's in, you crimp this side now. And now, voila, you've connected these two guys without a wire nut. And it works just as good. So let's do this for the other side and then we'll come back. All right, so let's put this last one in, the green wire. And we're gonna slide that one down into it and give her a good crunch. All right, and if for some reason you leave any exposed, I would probably put uh, some electrical tape around it but in this case, we should be fine. So, and then you just wanna push your wires back up. Actually, before you put it all away, you probably wanna test everything first. So um, I've got this little cover here that'll go on the top. Once I get them all in, we'll give her a test. So to make this as simple as possible, we're just gonna try to put this thing right back in its existing footprint. So, uh, sorry for this. It's hard to do this all and film at the same time try not to loosen the wires or anything but just want to match up if you can see there where the old holes were and you just want to put it right up in the same spot so I also uh, took the 
the shoddy piece of ugly brass, which is that what the other side looks like, and painted this side antique pewter. So that should fit into here now, which this is the light switch. So uh, I'm not gonna go with changing all these colors. It's just, there's no need to. These work just fine. Pop that in there, and now we have a brand new looking light switch. Looked online, these things are fairly expensive. So uh, super easy fix. And uh, that'll look a lot nicer too. Just screw this in and let's see if the light works. So we just plug these back in here just like so. And it looks like it's working because I got lights shining under here. That one's on. This one's on. And this one's on. So let's put them back together then. So guess what? Apparently I put these on wrong. Uh, these are supposed to go on the back and slide in that way. But in order to do so, I now have to clip these again. So make sure the power's off and give them a clip. So yeah, I'm gonna basically have to be, have to redo all of them. So here goes nothing. Welcome to the story of typical work for me. And I wouldn't clip them until you, I would at least mark them so you know which one is which. So now that I've unclipped it again, this is the actual way that you put it in. So early on I promised to make sure I showed mistakes and uh, victory, so this one was a mistake. But hopefully you uh, caught this before you did too many of them. That's why it's always a good idea to watch the entire thing first. So now that it's on and now that it's lined up, you just kind of squeeze it in. It's a pretty tight fit. Now that I'm doing this, I remember taking it apart, but yeah. So screw this back in, reconnect, and you're back in business. So let's uh, let's skip forward to get to that part. All right, so I gotta screw this in, but it's not in yet. But as you can see, our lights are in place. Loving how they're looking. Uh, again, we just redid the old one, so nothing new there. Just use the old material, but we're, uh, we're happy with it. We've also painted the fronts of these cabinets. Um, loving how these look as well. We just reused the old ones and, and uh, painted it up. Done a little bit of decoration with some um, old leftover wood that we had had to cover up the old speaker area. And we've done, uh, show you what these, uh, what these lights look like. Uh, we took the lights, painted them, the spray paint pewter that, uh, that I had showed you earlier. And then we just put all this stuff back together, put some new light bulbs in, ran this through a dishwasher and cleaned it out. And it looks like a brand new light. So we're really happy with how that's turned out as well. So we've done a lot of work on this living room and a lot to be proud of, but there's a lot more to do. So in our next several episodes, uh, we'll wrap this living room project up, uh, show you the bed that we've decided upon, build that thing, how we're gonna put that in. We've got flooring to, sh to put in. I'll show you how we did that step by step. We've got lots of rooms that we've got to work on as well. So please subscribe below, uh, like this video, uh, subscribe to our channel so that anytime we put out new content, you'll be able to see it first. And we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. So please, uh, please reach out, say something nice. Uh, let us know what your suggestions are, um, any comments. If you like what we did, hate what we did, cool, just be nice about it. Uh, but we will be coming out with new content soon. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.